Mystikum. And today's Mystic Minute is, Do Feelings Matter? Today I was listening to Christopher Witecki. He is an astrologer at soulgarden.tv. I really enjoy his interpretation of things. And he made this comment that the secret got it wrong, that thoughts don't become things, but that feelings become matter. Now, to tell you the truth, it's a little bit of both. What it is, is that we view the world through our pictures, our impressions, and our thoughts are the pictures that we view the world through. Now, we have thoughts with emotions attached to them. And some of those emotions can be like Vaseline on our lenses kind of thing. They can distort what we're seeing right now. A very clear illustration of this is post-traumatic stress. People come back from traumatic experiences, whether it's warfare or out of dysfunctional families, and they've got a lot of PTSD symptoms, which are that the pictures have a lot of emotion, and then you're not actually re- you're not actually really seeing you're not actually really seeing reality. When you clear your pictures, you know, it's like viewing the world with a clear lens, a neutral lens. It's like viewing the world without lenses, like Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie do. Then it feels clearer as well. So emotions do bring things into form. There's a couple of ways of looking at this. The emotions both distort what's really going on, but you're also creating through those emotions, and they they will bring circumstances into form. You know, you can create through resistance. So if you're in a lot of resistance, you will magnetically attract the stuff you don't want. If you create through joy, then no matter what happens, there's an element of joy to that. An example is like taking Byron Katie and putting her into a difficult circumstance, and she's still in this tremendous place of joyous acceptance. I'll give you an example from her book. I believe it was A Thousand Points of Joy, where she was in Germany and somebody was giving her a ride to where a friend of hers was dying. And the guy kept stopping to ask directions, not to where the hospital was, but to where he was going after the hospital. So he was taking all this time to ask those questions while she was in a hurry to get to the hospital before her friend died. She got to the hospital too late. Her friend was already dead. But she sat by the bedside and had a visitation. So to her, there was this acceptance of what was going on in the moment. And that the time that she showed up at the bedside was perfect timing. So our feelings matter in that they are creating our reality. So what are the thoughts and feelings you are evoking in yourself that are creating your reality? If you drive to work and you're thinking, oh God, I, uh, you know, I hate my work. I'm going to have this meeting and this person is so irritating and we're dealing with this issue which is so stupid and I wish I wasn't working here and so that's the reality you're creating. Now you could be going to a work place where the circumstances are not ideal and instead you could be thinking I would like to be or even stronger, I am in a workplace that is in harmony with my values. I feel fulfilled with what I'm doing. I'm actually fulfilling my calling. The people I work with are great to work with. I really enjoy them. I feel a sense of meaning with my work. I feel a sense of belonging in my workplace. It is such a great place. I enjoy hanging out with these people. And that redirects your circumstances. It could be that you show up at work and, oh my God, this is a fun place to work with after all. Or that person who is a real pain, 
doesn't come to work anymore because they got transferred. Or you show up and you get a pink slip and it's like, ah, oh. but the pink slip comes with unemployment that gives you a bit of time to recover from that workplace. So the thing that I am careful about is in saying your feelings matter or trust your feelings. If you're coming out of traumatic circumstances, if you come from dysfunctional family backgrounds, then it's a very, those are very reactive situations. And those feelings that are really strong and reactive and dramatic and all, you don't, you don't want to steer your boat by those feelings. When something is really super dramatic, to me that's dysfunctional. Steering your boat by something that may seem like a logical thought at first. Oh, she's being so intellectual. I used to judge Byron Katie because she was like so intellectual. It's like, no. Steering away from the more dramatic circumstances opens the space for your real feelings to come through. The aspect of you that is consciousness. And the experience of consciousness is joyous and accepting. There's a sense of both amusement and serenity. The sense that everything is exactly as it should be and all is very, very well. I can hear some of you going, if everything is what it should be, what if it sucks? <laughs> and in the process of letting go of those reactions, everything is as it should be and it effortlessly shifts and flows to something else. That's how you navigate out of circumstances. Oh, you can burn bridges if you want. You can go, screw this, I'm firing everybody else, I'm, I'm quitting. That is one way to create your reality, but you don't have to destroy everything. When you shift your reality within, your external reality changes. Other people may become more reactive at first as they are exacerbating the patterns. But those people will either disappear from your hologram or they'll come down because those emotions aren't bouncing. Somehow this seems really important to talk about as we're going into Thanksgiving and the holidays. You know, every, anytime families gather, lots of stuff comes up. So just remember, and I, I think I said this recently in another video as well, is don't react dramatically, even if it seems dramatic, because then it's dysfunctional and it's not true. The truth feels clear. The truth feels right. Not righteous, but right. The truth is calming and reassuring and even if it's bad, if there's this, there's an inner feeling of, thank goodness, finally there's clarity. And I would suggest that's the way you want to navigate is from the clearer feeling, the feeling of truth and clarity. Play with that for the next couple days. If you want to know more, my website is joan-nukem.com. You can subscribe to these on YouTube. You can also sign up to receive these in your inbox. I put them out twice a week. I have a bunch of other things on my website. I have a weekly radio show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I have meetups in the Tacoma, Seattle, and sometimes Olympia area. Uh, and they're also being uh, held by my co-host down in Portland. Go to meetup.com and look up Conscious Conversations. We also have a monthly conference call for Conscious Conversations. And go to my website to see the most recent things that I'm offering, joan-nukem.com. And stay tuned for another Mystic Minute in a couple of days.